Good morning. I just wanted to jump on and talk about a topic. I wanted to talk about narcissistic supply. That's the supply that the narcissist needs in order to thrive or live off of you or whomever else, you know, they victimize. So I was involved with the narcissist before and it goes like way back because I'm sure probably that I have come in contact with narcissists before I, I was even involved long term with one, but I just didn't know how to identify the characteristic of, or, e or even I didn't even know that there was such a thing as someone called a narcissist. But, um, and, ap and I apologize for the lighting again, you know, because I like to speak sometimes when I'm driving because that's where it's like a peaceful state. So I will um, speak sometimes when I'm driving. So sometimes the lighting just like shifts on me. But um, yeah, so um, the narcissist, they thrive off of this thing called supply. And what this is, is what this is, is that they use whatever resource out of you that continues to make them thrive or grow stronger or be successful or whatever they need you for in order to fulfill their agenda. Now be very clear, it's never about your agenda with the narcissist. It's never about your agenda. No matter how much they tell you it is, or no matter how much they make you believe that they are like, like team you, you know, like they are on your team, they are not on your team. Because their main objective is to get that supply, the supply that they need in order to succeed. So how they do this is whenever a narcissist meet you, now they're, they're not just, well, a lot of them, I don't believe, are just sitting there like saying, okay, who am I gonna get, who am I gonna get, who am I gonna get? Which I'm sure is some more sinister ones who think like that, but However, I, I, I believe that, there, that, excuse me, that there are people who have narcissistic tendencies who are totally unaware of the, the diabolic characteristic that dwells within them. So whenever you meet a, a person that's harboring that, well, I'll say what it really is. It's really like a Jezebelic spirit, a Jezebel spirit of control, manipulation, intimidation, domination, and all of the above that, that identify the Jezebel characteristic. Medical science has given it the name narcissism, but biblical and spiritual science, if for lack of a better word. No, I'm going to say biblical or spiritual truth defines it as the Jezebelic spirit. All day long, it's the Jezebelic spirit. So what this spirit does is when it is in contact with you, within that other person, something in you something in you attracts that spirit you know whether it's like codependency traits whether it is like low self-esteem whether it is bitterness unforgiveness you know um, just lack of confidence that spirit detects in you what it needs and knows that it needs in order to gain supply from you so whenever this person meets you now it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship it can be social relationships even children with parents you know um, it, it just has to be that supply factor between the parties so what this narcissistic spirit does is it picks 
and chooses who it's going to make a victim out of because it's just like if you're getting ready to like get into a fight you already size up a person if you have a chance you will size that person up to see if you have a chance of even whether you can conquer that person or not or what you need to do in a in order to conquer that person so with a with a narcissist they talk to you they observe you they study you all in the meantime you know if, if time permits they are like if 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 you have those tendencies that they can use they are like breaking you down inch by inch a lot of times it's not just like a big gigantic breakdown so it's an inch by inch by inch and even if it's even smaller than an inch half an inch <laughs> even whatever it is that they need to do just to like prick 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 but be not deceived because those little pricks are lethal those little pricks hurt like a splinter being you know uh, uh, I know I'll say a paper cut you know how how a paper cut is so small and such a such a very thin abrasion but that thing hurt so this is what the narcissist prick feels like you can't feel it like like all the time but if you hit that thing or, or, or if that area is like penetrated then you feel it okay so what this narcissist does is he or she sizes you up to see if if you're even like value of value to them you know because a narcissist is not going to too much deal with someone who sees who they are or who they cannot manipulate or people who are gonna like call them out and not allow them to be bullied or people that are gonna like challenge them they're not gonna deal with those kind of people so the people who they do victimize they're gonna do everything in their power to isolate you from those stronger people who can like either deliver you from their hand or get them told or do whatever they got to do to defend you okay so just be aware that whenever you run into people and they're trying to isolate you from everybody else and they're controlling you and they are like very condescending with you and they're always just like breaking you down in some kind of way they're always like like breaking you down or the psychological attack the psych the psyche attack is they would begin to try to make you think that you didn't see what you saw they're gonna try to make you think that you don't know what you know and at first at first because nine times out of ten their victims are not like tricky people their victims are not are not like people that have their guard up against this type of, of diabolic attack you their victims don't normally catch on um, at first because they they're not even aware that someone can be doing this to them so the first lesson is you got to always be aware and don't ever underestimate what a person is doing to you you know because, because oh my goodness especially the older generation you know like like well my era too you know we grew up in a community we grew up where you know we had like community we grew up where people were still concerned with other people we grew up in communities where people knew each other you know what i'm saying so so this newer the newer generations you know they're more like isolated anyway because it's a cell phone era texting you know computer age where they don't even have to be face to face with a human being you know but back in the day people were more on hands because we didn't have all the technology so the thing with that era was people gave people the benefit of the doubt almost to their own hurt okay you could know 
that somebody was just evil. You could know that they were evil. And then, you know, you but but what you would get is, oh well, well, it'll be okay. Give them another chance. Or people would, would sweep stuff under the rug and not really admit what a person really was. You know, because they thought that they were like judging or or they thought that, oh my goodness, you know, um, they're not that bad. Okay, that right there, that right there was like error because people are, are wicked, people are evil. And if you choose not to, not to tag a person with what they really are, then you're just setting yourself up for hurt. You're setting yourself up for failure. You know, if, if, if somebody is a murderer, then they a murderer. You better stay away from them. If somebody is a thief, guess what? They a thief. And they're just waiting for the opportunity to steal from you. You know, they may be sitting around chilling. You'd be like, well, they're not going to steal from me. Okay. All right. Let the opportunity arise whenever you're not paying attention or if it's something that, that whenever that little spirit in them want to like manifest and then, you know, you're going to be looking for something and it's going to be gone. Okay. So if somebody is a thief, then they're a thief. You know, uh, people gonna be a thief, but we neglect to look out for the thief. But the thief never neglects to look out for what they wanna get out of you. So be aware, you know, wake up, wake up and stop just being a wuss. Stop being so passive until you just let people do what they wanna do. If somebody is a liar, then guess what? They're lying to you too. If somebody is a is a cheat, if you see them like like always hustling and cheating the, the people, the cashiers in Walmart, or they're always like trying to like like run game or or you know just playing games with people's reasoning, then guess what? They plan with your reasoning too. So narcissist, narcissistic people can be children. You know, they can be children, you know, to say, if you say, um, Johnny, why did you do that? I didn't do that. Um, blah, blah. You know, they just already like going into that, to that narcissistic characteristic to where they're trying to manipulate you into believing that they didn't do what you know you saw them do. And as a child, people can say, oh, oh, you know, they're, they're lying. They'll get out of that stage. No, um, you might want to whoop their butts and and make them have punishment for what they're doing and do not allow them to continue to like grow in that in that way and you not like acknowledge or, or, or call them out or say something you know because a lot of times a child can do something lie or whatever they do and the parent just keep on going on like like it really didn't happen they might say I know I know you lying or whatever but then it, there's no punishment after that so then when they grow up as an adult you know and they're dealing with a woman or you know if it's a woman she's dealing with a man or whatever and she's doing the same thing and this um and, the, and this other person say i know you're lying they don't care because there's no punishment with that statement you know so so if somebody lies to me and i know that they're lying if I don't have no stake in it, you know, I, I mean, I just make a mental note and say, okay, they're a liar. But if I have a stake in it, like a husband or, you know, like a, a sister or a coworker or somebody who, who has something to do with me personally, and they are a liar, I'm going to like call the lie out. I'm going to call it out. I don't want to do it, but I got to do it because... I gotta let them know that I know that you're a liar. Even if even if it if it comes into a full-fledged argument or a full-fledged debate, you know, because I'm gonna let them know I saw what you did. I know what you did. You're not gonna convince me that you didn't do it. Now, if you wanna lie to yourself and say you didn't do it, then you do that. But I know that you did it. So whenever you're dealing with a person who has that narcissistic characteristic, you have to be strong and you have to have the courage to combat that spirit. 
because that's exactly what it is. It's a spirit. And if you don't say nothing, that gives them power. If you just let it slide, that gives them power. If you just get angry and just make me sick, that just gives them power. So you have to take action. You, whenever you know you're dealing with a, with a narcissist in marriage and just social, your social fabrics and everything, you have to take action. If you know that they're a narcissist, you have to say, okay, you can have a talk with them. But narcissistic people, from my experience, they don't change. They don't change unless the Holy Spirit changes them. If they don't get saved for real and get delivered from that spirit, they don't change. It can That, that characteristic can lie dormant for a long time. But long as it's still there, that thing will manifest when the opportunity arises. When the opportunity arises, that spirit will manifest. So you have to like have a talk with them and let them know that you don't appreciate how they're treating you, which nine times out of 10, they don't care. They may cry or, or try to like, try to like fight for you because they want to keep that narcissistic supply whatever they're using you for they want to keep that they're not going to give that up easy so they may like try to fabricate like they're like fighting to keep what y'all have together but if you know that they are a narcissist google it google it and see what the what the characteristics and the traits are and the damage that they do the the way that they um, wreak havoc on a relationship google it google it and study it because you have to know what you know you have to know what you know and that's what you're gonna have to like go on you're gonna have to be like listen you go to yourself go to the park or something or just wherever you can like reflect and get yourself together you go reflect and you say okay now this has happened and this has happened and this has happened so this is not just isolated events this is not just like a oops they just like made a bad choice this is a pattern this is a pattern that they continue to do although they know that I don't like it but they just keep on doing it so you have to say okay so they disrespecting me now they disrespecting me so you have to ask yourself, are you gonna continue to disrespect yourself? Are you gonna continue to like say, I ain't gonna say nothing. I, I'm just gonna deal with it. And be mad and bitter and, and holding all of this stuff inside where disease and dis-ease begins to like fester where you know, you're just bitter and it's, and it's starting to show on your countenance where you're just angry and you're taking it out on everybody else because you're afraid to, to like take it out on the person that's, that's administering the pain. You know, because the way that this world operates is if you feel like you can't defeat the person that you wanna defeat, you take it out on somebody else who you think that you can conquer. That's how bullies act. Bullies are nine times out of 10 being bullied by somebody else, but they, in turn in return bully someone else who they think is like less than them you know like like in the jungle world i guess if it's a lion well the lion is the king of the jungle so i'm gonna say if it's like a like a smaller animal who can bully an even smaller animal guess what it's an animal that's 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 even if it's the same size animal but it's just more powerful that's gonna bully and 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 hunt that animal you know so it's just like it's just like it goes around and, and, and there's even like like animals that can like conquer the lion too but so so yeah so a bully is nine times out of ten being bullied by someone else so you in return are gonna have to know what you know and this is where courage comes in because you're gonna have to gain the courage to make the changes 
because that other person is not on your side. They are not on your side. Yeah, y'all can laugh and have fun and y'all can like do a lot of things together, but they are not on your side. They are using you. And whenever that and whenever they choose to like you know like go through that honeymoon stage with you to where they making you feel like oh you know they love me they love me they love me that's that's a that's a trick too that's a part of their narcissistic supply keeping okay they're doing that to like to like pacify you so that you will like be okay which you're never okay on the inside because you always know that there's something wrong. You always know that there that there's something array. You always know that, but you you're going to have to do something about it. You are the one that's going to have to like respect your own self and do something about it. Get yourself out of harm's way. Because this narcissistic game is no joke and they play to win. They play to win. They don't care if your blood pressure go up. They don't care if you're overeating so much and you get diabetes and you die or something. They don't care if you're crying every night. They don't care. They don't care. They don't care. As long as they're getting their supply out of you. Because guess what? If you die, they just going to have another supply. They probably already have like, like numerous resources of supply right now. They already have different resources of supply because they already know that they need all of this supply. So, so yeah, just be aware of the narcissist and the narcissistic tendencies, the narcissistic traits, and the narcissistic um, attack on you, on your mind, on your will, on your emotions. You feel it. I know you feel it. I felt it. I felt it. I didn't know how to like handle it at first. But I felt it. I felt it. So yeah, just be aware and do what you got to do to get out of that narcissistic web. All right? And have a good day and we will talk later. Thank you for listening and thank you for watching.